it's not like you know these staircases just you know go into an open part of the ceiling. There's actually a a, a trap door at the end of of the staircase. Can I hear them talking? Sure, you can. Yeah, actually, you can hear a like a humming type of sound, a and you can hear someone chanting, and you can hear the wind swirling around out on top of this tower. You know, especially the the more that you ascend up this tower, you can hear that the winds are starting to swirl outside of the tower again. Can I, if I raise the trap door enough, can I peek in? Sure, like, you can peek out. Yeah. Barely enough. Yeah. yeah. Yes, you can. You see outside of this, the flat part of the tower, and on the other, on the opposite side of you, you see that there are four figures, four guards, that are all armored. They have weapons. They're not facing you either. They're all facing what is on the other side of where you're at, and it, it appears that there is an altar and a young boy that is kind of leaning up on this altar. And you can see that this young boy's got, you know, blood on his arms, you know, on his, you know, on the back of his neck. So, yeah, probably, this is probably large. And you can so, also uh, see this Do I have a clear shot to the uh, spellcaster? <laughs> yes, you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because around him, as he's, as he's speaking, he's chanting and he's, you know, pointing towards the altar, you can actually see that he has this this swirling vortex of air that is basically encircling him. And he's closer to the altar. He's probably about 10 foot from the altar. And in fact, I'm going to show you uh, what you see. Now, I'm going to just show you the map because you're the only one that is actually uh, looking at this. So let's, uh, let's do this. Did, did you say there was two sets of stairs? Uh, basically to make one, yes. And they, they both okay. kind of conjoin, yes. So they, they ended the same trap door? Correct, yep. Okay. All right, so you were going to see <clears throat> some guards. I'm assuming the priest is towards that red object there. Yeah, pretty much. Exactly. You can see the map, right? Yeah, I can okay. see it. Very good. All right. So here is where you are at. You're basically right here. And then there's the the young boy that's up at the altar. And then there is a, a mage that's about five foot away from, you know, from the altar. He's encased in the swirling vortex. And How encaptured are they? Like, can I get into the room without them noticing me, or is it seem well, like it's it's open? Lamar it's Earth. open air. So this is the top of the tower. So you know, yeah, you can get outside of this. I mean, you're going to have to perform a, you know, to open up the door fully and to slink out there. Yeah, you're going to need to do some kind of like stealth check versus their perception. And the only one making any noise right now is he's just chanting. There's no talking or anything Correct, going on yeah. like that. The, the four figures, the four guards that are in front of you, yeah, they're just basically focused in on that altar and focused in on the, the prophet that is actually performing uh, the ritual. Okay. I'm going to try and stealthily get into the room. Okay. All right. So who else is, uh, as we... I think we're starting, starting to move to up move behind. In. Yeah. Yeah. Where is everyone else? Is it? Because I'm I'm there's... right behind Sylvia, and then I was waving other people up. Gildan. Yeah, I'm, I'm behind him. Okay. And I think Gildan's behind me. Okay. So it is uh, about it is then, twenty feet. Right so whoever is not on the staircase will have a little bit of movement to make before they can actually get up to the tower. So, but uh, whoever is on the staircase. I'll be the last one up because I was kind of checking on the bodies as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll put myself at the back here. All right. Let me uh, get one token out really quick. If you guys want to kind of maybe, if you want to kind of describe what you see to everyone really quick, uh, <coughs> Sylvia. 
as you kind of sl just before you slink out of the door. Yeah, just because... before I slink up, I, I kind of motion. One priest spell and four warriors. Not paid too much attention. Come on. Does not look good. Then you have Larch, look very poor. Come, come see. Shh. I'm glad I did not have time to unpack in my room. <laughs> Still have my crossbow on me. And I yeah, so I'm basically going to, to stealthily get up there and take a good aim at the uh, the spellcaster there because I'm not very dis I'm not very trustful of anyone with magic in this town. And um, I'm going to uh, after she leaves the trap door, I'm going to keep it propped open a couple inches to peek out and I'm going to, once she fires her arrow I'm going to prepare a command spell at the spellcaster also okay. So if they're in if, if it seems like they're kind of readying themselves, once they're prepared I'm going to go ahead and shoot no, you, so let me know what to You've got total surprise on them they, they do not even acknowledge that you came out of that trap door and you are you're actually out on the top and you know like i said this whirling vortex is around you know the prophet you can also you know s feel that the winds are not strong like they were down at the base of the tower but there are some winds up here and they have no clue that you're even here because like i said their backs are facing you so, so i'm going to go ahead and take them, a shot yeah, you and hopefully that he doesn't see where it so, comes from all right so <laughs> Yeah, next time you want to do that, uh, yeah, you're really quick on rolling the die. So go ahead and uh, roll another attack because you're going to have advantage on this attack. Because you are. So, generally, what would I do for it? Just so I know. Uh, on the lower left hand corner, that little modifier box, there is an ADV button. Anytime that you have advantage, uh, just go ahead and click that. And the next time you roll, it will roll twice and take the highest of the two rolls. And okay. put the highest roll there. So, for this time, okay. you, I mean, you've already hit the target. Whatever target, which target are you attacking? But she did have a crit. Yeah, but exactly. So go ahead and roll another uh, d20. Not Almost, but yes, you, you with advantage you do hit. And and who are you attacking? The priest. Okay. So you shoot your bow. Your arrow zings through the two guards, and this whirling vortex reflects the arrow away from the from the priest and your arrow okay. goes flying off to the side do, now do they notice the arrow or do they notice where it came, came from they most certainly do now the okay. first the priest he, he notices and he continues to chant and he looks over towards you and he just kind of nods and then when he nods to the four guards the four guards turn around and we'll go ahead and roll initiative now so I had ready to uh, to cast a command spell command. when now, when you, she shot, and I was going to command him to grovel. Were you coming outside or just through the through the hatch? Okay, so I'll go ahead and I'll share the map fully with everyone now. And okay, so let's go ahead and get your uh, your token out there, Atticus. You can be the one basically sticking your head out of the out of the trap door still. And you're yep. wanting to do command, you said? Yeah, I was using, I had ready the command spell to, to yell grovel at him. Okay. Ooh. I think there's some kind of saving throw involved in that, isn't there? Yeah, it's, it's a uh, wisdom DC 13. DC 13. I, I dropped it in the window if you want to drop it on him. Okay. Alright. Wow. The guards are going to go first, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the bottom of the stairs, so that's probably okay with me. Yeah, the uh, the failure, uh, the, the saving throw is a failure. Now, as for, I need to read a command really quick. Yeah, I, I was um, I was targeting the the priest with that. Yeah, they're all going to. I think they're all pretty much going to have the same stats. I need to. Oh, he can okay. he can yeah, link it, says it he in falls the chat. Prone I ends his turn. I was hoping to disrupt whatever he was doing. Yeah, I'll have to learn that. That's very uh, that's a very useful spell. <laughs> I think there's something that for those that do not want to I think those of noble blood. Oh, 
One of us goes first. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, I don't see anything about it uh, where you have to hear. I thought there was some kind of mechanic in there that actually uh, in, involved being able to, to hear, not only see, but to, to hear. So, All right, so the, the priest failed the saving throw, and the priest starts to grovel as he goes to his knees. Now the other guards have turned around. Everybody needs to go ahead and roll initiative. And Chris, on your character sheet, when you open it up, did you find the initiative button by chance? I did, yeah. Okay, you did? I rolled it. Okay, very good. Everybody's rolled their uh, initiative? Yep. I think so. All right, yep. very good. All right, so Thilo, you can go ahead and go first, which you were down. You were saying you were on the bottom of the stairwell, so you're about about 20 mm. feet. Now, what is your movement? You can move can through 20. friendlies as well. So, yeah, it's 25, okay. so I should be able to pop up at the top. Yeah, you sure can. We'll say that. Uh, yeah, you can definitely get up to the to the top, and you can be standing on on top of the the tower there. So let's put Thilo here. All right. And, you know, you can see the four guards. They've turned around. They're facing you. And all of these guards, they have the same reflection as poor Benesi. So it definitely looks like all of these guards are related to poor Benesi. Spit an image of one another. Nice. I think we found her brothers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, that was a busy family. <laughs> All right, so Silo, what are you doing? Just moving? You've moved your movement. What would you like to do for your standard action? Oh, oh, I get to do it. That's right. This is I don't play five e. Cool. Um, oh, yeah. So you. if I <laughs> uh, if I get uh, I can attack with my bow, right? Sure. As part of your movement, you know, you can pull out your weapons. So yes, you can most certainly attack. Perfect. Now I will find. And this, the priest that is groveling still has this whirling vortex that has basically encased him and is encircling him. Alright, so um, I can just drag my attack on an, on the token, right? Sure can, yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go for the guard on the left, guard number one. Okay, sounds good. All right, that is a miss. You shoot with your short bow. The guard takes and sees the arrow coming and just knocks it off to the side. Well, that was rude. The guards are in <laughs> chain mail. They have shields, and basically he just swiped your, your arrow away with the shield. All right. Next, let's go with the guards. So it is guard. It might have been one. easier to hit if he was a goblin. <laughs> <laughs> Guard number one is going to move up and attack Atticus. He is going to attack you with a spear. And he hits you with a 13 Atticus. Now, if I'm still um, with a partly open hatch, do I get cover? Uh, not, as he, not if he's pointing down at you, no. Now, if he was shooting at you, sure, yeah. But he's kind of, you know, the door's open, the hatch is open, the other halfling has popped out, he's just basically attacking down at you. Fair enough. Alright, so you'll take a total of two piercing damage. Oh. <laughs> That's a lot for a level one. Yeah. <laughs> Guard number two. Uh, he is going to fall back. Guard three is going to fall back. Guard four is going to move up and attack Thilo. He is also wielding a spear, and he charges at you as he yells, For the cloaks! And he whiffs as the spear, as he misjudged your height and kind of swung the spear over your head. All right. Sounds about right. Sylvia, it is your uh turn now. Does 5e have uh, flanking and backstabbing? No. There's optional rules for it in a DMG, but we won't use it. So there's no advantage you... to me getting right behind him? Nope. Well, you'll, if you're adjacent, if anyone is adjacent to it, you do get your sneak attack. Correct. You just don't yep. get an advantage on it. 
yeah, you just won't get a you just won't get advantage. Right? But if I you'll okay, do more so damage move, if you hit. <laughs> I'm gonna move my guy. You guys tell me if there's advantage if I move my person there. No, it, it's no. not an advantage. But if you hit it, you'll deal sneak attack damage. Yeah, that, that, that's when I uh, advantage is not in the five E advantage. I meant an yeah. actual advantage like a sneak attack. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna attack with my rate here then. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, like I was saying, there's some optional rules in the DMG for flanking that would give you advantage on your attack, but we're we're not gonna use those. But your attack, okay. nonetheless, with your rapier, is a hit. So you can okay. go ahead and, and roll your damage. Do I have to? Do I need to do anything for the sneak attack, or I just roll the damage and it uh, you, it? You'll get you'll get sneak attack. So on your character sheet, you should have a. Hopefully, you'll have a, a sneak attack pendant that you can draw up on there. Where would I find that? Uh, you'll have uh, to. Put, I think step. you'll have to put that on there manually, maybe, unless it's automatically put on there now. Let's take a look at your character sheet. So we uh, go to your. Oh, no, you normally need that. Yeah, Add the ability. To. Okay. So just for now, I think what a sneak attack will be 1d6 for you. So I'm just going to roll a 1d6 in the yeah, chat. Yeah, and then we'll just add a, okay. I'll just add the damage on there, and then we'll have to okay. uh, add a sneak attack uh, pendant onto your action stab. All okay. Right, so you the, total the other thing you could do is you could drop a, a 1d6 in and then just drag the value to the modifier before you do your damage, and it'll, it'll add that into it as well. You can do that too. So you do a total of 12 damage to the guard. You do enough damage to where the guard shrieks in terror as your rapier pierces through his chainmail and he falls down to his knee and you have blood dripping off of the end of your rapier. It looks like guard four is incapacitated. Thanks. All right. So guard four is out. Man, you guys, can, can I make a request? Can you guys put the blood splatters on there, like uh, Savage Worlds? The Savage Worlds <laughs> that is pretty awesome. When right. somebody dies, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that is. <laughs> awesome. Is that a hard thing to do? Atticus, you're up. Okay. Hmm. Well, you, you could do it now as a token if you want. Yeah, but then people would be dragging it around and stuff, and I'd rather not do that. <laughs> Um, let's see, I guess I will move out of the way and uh, uh, smack this guy with my staff for hitting me. Ungod, sir! Ungod! Oof, oh. As you hit him, oh, as you pound him with your staff for a total of Oh, I returned the favor. One point. This is, you hit like a woman. You should stick to casting magic. <laughs> All right. So, any other movements? Go ahead and take it. Graven, hey, you're I'm up. done. How far down were you, Graven? Uh, I was just a little, maybe halfway down. All right. So we'll say that. Uh, so ten feet. I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna come up the stairs, and uh, I, I don't want to end up adjacent to that guard that's fighting Atticus. Okay, you want to come over uh, here. So if I could end up like. Yeah, that'd sure. be great. Yeah. Um, and then I, I guess my question is, uh, I'm going to cast a spell here, and uh, I want to target these uh, the two guards in the back here, and the spellcaster would all be in the area. Um, is there? Do I just go ahead and cast the spell, like roll the dice, or I'm casting sleep? Now what? Are, okay. Yeah, great, great choice for a spell. So, what you want to do, seeing that it's your turn. And there are three NPCs that you want to target. And sleep has a massive radius, yeah. or no need, there's no need to. But if you want to, I'll show you really quick. Now, if you right click on the actual map itself, there will be a radial menu yeah. come up. And you can click on pointers in the upper left hand corner. And you can draw a circle, hit the circle, and then you can draw a circle to how big your, your AE is going to be. So it's really cool that okay. you can do that with Fantasy Ground. So, and you can do that with cones, cool. and you can do that with uh, square attacks, or, you know, as four used to call them, blasts. So you, you can do that. So very cool. Right on. Very cool. Thing. So, yeah, I'm going to affect that, that area, basically. And uh, I'll go ahead and cast a spell. Okay. Um, so we can do a saving throw for all three of these guys. Well, uh, two of the guys at one time. Go ahead and... Uh, there's, there's no saving throw for the spell. Oh, that's it's, right. Uh, it's hit points, right? It's it's actually it's, you roll sixty eight or something like that. Five d eight. Five d eight. Okay. Yeah, five d eight, and uh, so I'll just. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Roll some Go for here. it. 
Mm, That's right, I forgot. There's no saving throw for, for sleep in 5e. What? Quite a powerful spell for a level 1 character. It is, yeah. So, rolling the dice on this. Now, you can go ahead and pick up the uh, whatever die you need. Yeah. And you can right just as you pick up the die, just keep holding down the uh, the left button, and you can right click that die, and more dice will appear. And Got then it. you can go ahead and throw it into the chat box, and then we'll take that total, and then I'll start putting creatures to sleep. Oh wow, twenty nine! Holy cow! So the two yeah, guards bro. they seem to go into a uh, sort of like a slumbering state. The, it doesn't seem like the, the mage is affected. <coughs> the mage is still, you know, kind of rocking back and forth, kind of groveling. Okay. All right. I'm good. Very nice. I like that. So we'll put uh, conditions on these two. And they will be, uh, I believe it is incapacitated. So that will be guard number two and three. Incapacitated. Incapacitated. There we go, Graven. Nice turn. You can kind of take any other movement you want. You, you have still have, what, 10, 15 feet of movement still. So if you'd like to move, you can go ahead and move. So, uh, Curlioa, it is your turn now. You're probably, uh, what, about 15 feet back or so? Yeah, something like that, 15 okay, feet. Okay, sure. So 15. Uh, he, he comes running up the stairs to try to see what's going on. He just hears a lot of shouts and, you know, uh, screams and stuff. Thuds and, and you know. Arrows whisking through the air. Yes. Trying to figure out the, what's going on. The yeah. wind swirling around the tower. You can hear. You know. You could. You could hear the priest chanting, but you can't hear yeah. that anymore because he's groveling. So. Uh, is there anybody on anybody on the altar or anything like that? Yeah, there is a a, a young man that is kind of strewn out on the altar. Okay, he's just going to stride. Uh, so he's got. No, that's too far. That's about 15. Uh, he's going to use his action to dash, and he's going to approach the altar. Okay. And and check and see and make sure the, the guy's alive. And, you know, if he's tied up, he'll start undoing his his, uh, his bindings. He is bound. So you've, you've already used your action, but you can tell yeah. that the young man is definitely still alive. He's in really bad shape. But he's definitely still alive. Well, I, I shout back, he's alive, guys! <laughs> and that's it. And All right, Gildan, back to you. So I'm right at the bottom, below the, the start of the stairs, I believe. So uh, I've got about 30 feet, so I'll you know, make my way up as far as I can get. Okay. I don't know if that quite gets me to there. And then while, while I'm getting there, I'm going to kind of grab my whip as well and so uh, I guess from there I'm gonna try to just whip the guy from the the top of the stairs the guard one guard one yeah I think well the whip's got a special what a reach, reach or something yeah. like that okay yeah it's a reach so I'll see if I can crack it over at him oh yeah it's a blistering crack as he ah you know you hit him in the the bare part of his neck because he is wearing chain armor so go ahead and roll your damage all right, and so with some sneak attack, I'll whoosh. hit him for ten points. He, he's in a very bad condition, and he, and it looks like he's starting to stumble around now. You can see that he's got a a huge slash opened up on his neck with blood squirting out of it. And would you like to take all... any other movement? No, actually, uh, I'll just kind of hang out right there. Okay, let's go with uh. Philo, you're up again. Round number two. Can't hear you, Carl. You might be muted. I was muted. Um, everybody seems to be incapacitated or dying. What what happened with the priest? Is he still The priest is is groveling. groveling. And how how long is it a saving throw at the end of every turn or, or what? It's just one round. One round? Okay. So yeah, he, he is not groveling anymore. He's starting to shake the the cobwebs, I guess you could say, out of his head. It looks like he's he's fixing to stand up. Oh well that seems that seems a valid target. 
Okay. So I guess he does I have will... a, a whirling vortex around him as well. You do notice that that is something that is quite interesting. Oh, that's still there. Yes. Although I, I will say this, uh, and you noticed this, Sylvia, that after the first guard had died, it doesn't look like that vortex is as intense as it was. Hmm. Okay. All right, well, in that case, I'm going to move closer. I don't, I don't want to... Firing an arrow at this whirling vortex doesn't seem to be the best you idea. You could fire an arrow at the guard, though. I, at the incapacitated guard? That hardly seems fair. <laughs> you wake him up. The guard back here, uh, that is in the back, he's in pretty bad shape. He's dying, though. He'll be... Yeah, he's got blood gushing all over the place, so... Yeah, no, I'm just gonna... I'm gonna move the 25 that toward one's the... Toward the... What happened to the... I was gonna move up here toward the. There he is. <laughs> he's, there. He's, there. He's, there. he's there. Right, right between the guards. That looks perfect. I was just performing there's some Jedi mind tricks on you. They're asleep. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna do. I'm just gonna do my 25 foot move. That's it. Okay. All right. So let's go with the. All right. Let's see, the prophet. He stands up. And he tells you to not mingle in the affairs of not only the Storm Lord, but the cloaks as well. He pulls a scimitar out and he slashes at you, Curleona. Uh oh. Alright, so let's see. The attack with the scimitar is a 17, which is a hit. Um. He's going to, uh, he, he throws his arm up and, and, and shouts some kind of word that's arcane word that he doesn't understand in defense. He's like, don't, don't hit me, and then he throws his arm up and uh, that misses. Are you doing, uh, what is it, uh, mage shield. shield or something like that? Yeah, shield. It's uh, plus five to AC until the start of my next turn. Okay. So go ahead and drop the plus five pendant if you have one onto your onto your character, and that will, let's see, should make it miss. What is your, what is your armor class? Uh, 15. 15, oh yeah. It, it 15 before, move. 20 after, yeah. so. Alright, sounds good. Great move. Deduct your uh, spell slot there. You've used yep. your triggered action. So, very good. Reactions okay. down. Let's go to the guard that is on his, his last leg. He, he, you know, he's Swinging for the fences, he's trying to take Atticus's head off. So he attacks you with a spear, Atticus, and seeing that he's he's almost out, he actually swings swings so horribly that he falls to a prone position, and as he falls over, his head is on the ground, and you can just see the blood starting to form a pool as the last of his blood just gushes from his body, and he falls over. I know that wasn't me. I did that. So when that happens, does his uh, war wax, vortex, or whatever get weaker? It does. It does. Okay. For sure. All right. So let's go to the next guard, and I'm going to put a couple of of blood stains here to represent the the dead guys. All right. Now next, we'll go to the uh, guard. This guard's sleeping. How long does sleep last? Uh, sleep will last for a minute as long as I'm concentrating on it. Okay. Yep. So as long as you're concentrating, you've got still got ten rounds left, and mm -hmm. the guard is still slumbering. Cool. Sylvia, you are up. I have no qualms about killing sleeping men. <laughs> <laughs> Except for I can't shoot very well. <laughs> Well, I, I believe that uh, seeing that he is incapacitated, I think that will give you uh, advantage, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to drop that. So you that can just roll the attack time. again. It, it. Oh, that's much better. Okay. <laughs> so, do you want me to go ahead and roll the damage? Uh, yeah, I'm just uh, double checking something really quick. Yeah, and you can actually go ahead and add in sneak attack too. 
because you have your one of your allies that is uh, adjacent to the target. 